So now we are here about a project that is ongoing in Belarus. Uh, Andreas? Okay, thank you, Armini, for the introduction. So my name is Andreas Habel. I'm working for the Michael Zucco Foundation in Greifswald. It's a small NGO uh, that deals mainly with the development of management plans for protected areas with a geographical focus on the eastern countries, so uh, the transition countries of the former Soviet Union, and with a regional focus also in uh, steppe areas and um, the Middle East, and with a focus on peatland. Uh, conservation and management. So today I want to give um, a project we implement with partners in Belarus as a case study within this webinar. We implement this project Wendland Energy together with International Sakharov Environmental University in Minsk um, together with the Institute for Nature Management of the uh, Academy of Sciences, also located in Minsk, and with a uh, uh, peat briquetting factory of the Belltop Gas Group in Belarus with leader peat briquetting factory. The project is since almost two years on the ground, and the project, project implementation time will end 2015. And the project is um, uh, implemented within the European aid um, program as an external action of the European Union. So just to remind you where Belarus is situated in the east of Europe between Poland, the Baltic States, Russia and the Ukraine. And peatlands in Belarus, they uh, covered up 3 million hectares of Belarus once. That makes 15% of the um, land cover in Belarus. And half of it, 1.5 million hectares, had been drained, mainly for agriculture, then forestry, and uh, for peat extraction. And uh, nowadays, Belarus is amongst, as we saw also in Aminos' for, uh, presentation, amongst the top emitters of greenhouse gases from drained peatlands with 41 million tons uh, CO2 equivalents per year. And since 15 years, the administration in Belarus shows high willingness to cooperate in international climate projects. Nowadays, uh, peat extraction for energy purpose still goes on in 25 peat factories that produce peat briquettes, and they produce on 36,800 hectares of former 150,000 hectares drained for this purpose. And as you can see in this graph, um, the figures had dramatically dropped for peat extraction since the 1970s, with a minimum at the new millennium at 2000. But the tendency is again growing, so they want to increase peat production for energy to be more independent from the gas deliveries from Russia. So this conven conventional approach of peatlands for energy leads to habitat destruction, fire hazards, emission high emissions of greenhouse gases, and you also dependent on a finite resource. <clears throat> so what do we do with on our project? We try to um, substitute this fossil energy resource peat briquettes by a new renewable energy resource. So in by, a trans, by rewetting um, drainage and extraction sites that had been uh, depleted and uh, establishment of reeds, uh, reed beds for uh, wet biomass utilization. So the focus of the wetland energy polluted culture approach is uh, for restoration of peatlands. It uh, targets the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and the substitution of fossil fuels with renewables. And it, <clears throat> it uh, aims also at the generation of income and energy in remote areas. So now I come to the project sites in Belarus. So the main implementation uh, site is located in Dokudovskoye peatland in the west of Belarus, where a leader peat briquetting factory has its uh, factory grounds. It's uh, uh, mainly a fen peatland with some tradi uh, transitional um, mire elements and also a small bog complex that is already under 
conservation and protected or not uh, for extraction of peat. So it's it's uh, the one big advantage of the project is to have an enterprise as a project partner, but it's also the, the big challenge because we have to keep track and take care that really the basic ideas of paludic culture are um, find input to the business plan that is now under development at the factory. But we work together quite good with with the director of the factory. You see it on the on the see him on the right hand side in this group. He's a very progressive and cooperative person, and he already thinks about how to diversify the, the, the products of his factory into the direction of a sustainable and renewable energy fuels in future. Um, so together with the factory, we plan wetting on of depleted peat areas and try to set up a utilization chain from harvest of biomass to the marketing of fuel product products. And situated at International Sakharov University, there is going to be a life cycle analysis where all the figures that are generated within the, the project find input to a, to a life cycle analysis. So the rewetting sites are at Leader Peat Factory. So this is like a depleted or almost depleted um, peat excavation site look like. So in the back, you can see already sand from the maintenance of the ditches. And in the front, you can see that reed is quite abundant along the ditches. And these are suitable for uh, rebatting sites. So together with uh, our partners from International Sakharov University with, and with the Institute for Nature Management and the Leader Peat Factory, we uh, planned a site selection for, of 300 hectares at Leader Peat Factory. We plan and implement the rebatting together with the partners and we plan the wheat bed establishment. But to have already a biomass available, there are also sites uh, at Leader Peat Factory that we vetted spontaneously after their abandonment about 10 or 15 years ago, and there's quite good established reed beds existing. And this is going to be harvested uh, now this month for the first time, and harvest is done on these sites uh, with um, conventional technology that is adapted and is produced in, in Belarus. So you see here there are twin tires on the on the tractor and it's a, a, a low weight mowing and um, baling machine behind. But um, the main challenge uh, for the um, harvest on wet and soft peatland soils is to optimize also the technology for, for the harvesting process and therefore we have some um, auspicious uh, enterprises identified in Belarus. On the left hand side you can see a machine from the company Blooming. They mainly develop um, low weighted uh, um, uh, machines uh, based on low pressure wheels that minimize the impact on the soil and they mainly produce up to now for expeditions for to the Arctic. On the right hand side you can see a, a, tr a machine from a traditional agricultural um, machine producer, Gommel Mash, situated in Gommel in the uh, southeast of um, Belarus. These, uh, they, they produce already um, machines tracked, uh, with, tracked, um, uh, with tracks and it's also good to minimize the impact on the soil but at the moment the machines are quite too heavy so the, the development must be too have more light weighted machines. But it's at the moment there will be also um, a machine developed within the project, but the tender is on the way to be launched also this month. But Leader Peat Briquetting Factory already did investments in new production lines and they have already experience to uh, add biomass to the um, peat briquettes they produce. Uh, up to now they have just some experience with straw and wood, but from October on they are going to use the um, reed biomass in this mini peat thing line that you can see on the right hand side on the, on the slide. And they will start to optimize the processing of biomass briquettes from autumn 2014 on with this new biomass they har harvest. Now I come to the second project implementation site. So it's um, 
situated in the southwest of Belarus, in, in grounds of uh, Sporovsky Sarkasnik at the Yasielda River Valley. And here the focus of the Sarkasnik is uh, this flagship species you can see on the left hand side, a small bird species, the aquatic warbler, who finds here in Yasielda River Valley the largest breeding sites and is global in the aquatic warbler is globally threatened passerine wetland species. And here you can have an impression on the habitat of the aquatic warbler and you can see also the problem the sarcastic faces. You can see the shrubs in the background. The, uh, there's a rapid shrub encroachment that uh, threatens the breeding sites of the um, aquatic warbler. And therefore the sarcastic implements already habitat management by mowing and it's done with these adapted machinery, also tracked vehicles. Um, and here we find a chance to monitoring already harvest processes, so time and costs for the um, harvesting process. And monitoring is also implemented for the vegetation changes after repeated mowing. As you can see on the, on the lower right on this slide, there is, when you move uh, more frequently with this machinery on one side, you can have really severe impact on uh, soil and also on vegeta vegetation. So I come already to my conclusions. So the production of bio biomass fuels in paludic cultures on reverted peatlands in Belarus is still it's in its pilot phase. So the uh, business plans uh, at Lear Peat Factory will be developed and there will be also some guidelines developed for upscaling. But it finds auspicious preconditions in Belarus. So we have willing authorities and entrepreneurs that are uh, willing to implement such new innovative approaches. And we find synergies with management peatland conservation areas. And the approach can contribute to greenhouse gas emission reduction from drained peatlands. So and we hope that in the end we will come up with guidelines to give also other regions um, some guidance for, for peatland rewetting and utilization. Thanks for your attention.